What's up, y'all? Today, we are talking about the five mistakes that new Christian believers make. The reason why I'm making this video is because uh, this is a real thing, man. This happens a lot. I've done some of these things, and I consistently see new believers doing this, like Christians that just came over to the faith, that just got baptized, all of that. I see a lot of them making these same mistakes. Right, and I've been in the game for a minute, man. I've been I've been walking this walk for for some years now, right? So I want to go ahead and help those that may not realize these things beforehand, or may actually be going through it right now. All right, so we're gonna talk about the five mistakes that new Christian believers make, and they consistently keep making, right? And it's okay that they make it, but we need to be aware of these things, and plus, we want to help each other before this happens or while someone is going through it, okay? So the first mistake that new Christian believers tend to make a lot is they believe that this walk is easy, <laughs> right? New Christian believers tend to think that this walk is easy. What do you mean, Rudy? New believers tend to believe that everything is going to always feel good when you come over to this walk. And I understand. And I understand, right, because you didn't change your life. Your life was like this before you came to God and God saved you. You know, you, you realizing new things and now you want to change your life because you know it's better on this side. Or you realize how much Jesus loves you. and Or you even heard that it's supposed to be better on this side. So you're coming over here. And where we confuse ourselves at is that we think that better means feeling good or easier. Right, so a lot of people come over here, you know what I mean, and start walking with Christ, and then they run into a brick wall, or they get hit with a brick, right? And what I mean is that they feel the pain when they walk over here. They feel the pain when they come over here. They don't think about the picture of Christ when he got crucified and why that happened. They don't think about that Jesus said, you gotta follow me. And to follow him is to go through the same pain that he went through. They don't think that. They don't believe that. So I want to help, you know, people understand that when you come over here to the faith, it's not easy at all. It is not easy. I do want you to know that it is way better. It is way better. Your life is way better. Jesus takes away all the pain and I mean pain and agony that you was going through, but it will be painful to get that thing. Just think about when you want to start exercising and you ain't exercised all your life or you ain't exercised in five years. Is it easy to transform and transition from not exercising to exercising every day? Even though you know it's healthier for you, you understand? Even though you know your life will be better, but it's hard, right? Same exact thing as being over here. It's going to be hard because you came from a whole different world, whole different lifestyle, whole different mindset. You was doing different things. You was believing a different way. You was acting different ways. You had different friends and family. Like people were different and you were different, right? You acted ways. You believed all of this. You felt all of this. And now you got to change that. That's not easy, especially when you put that in front of people who actually thought that way. The people you was around that thought that way and, and acted these ways and believed these things, right? That's hard. That's going to be extremely hard. So this walk is not easy. And we also forget that the enemy got a hit out for us. As soon as we start walking this walk, the enemy is coming after you. He got a hit out for you. He coming after you hard. So that's what I want people to know. So the first thing is that new believers tend to believe that this walk is easy and that everything feels good. Just because something feels good is not equated to good, right? Look at Jesus. He suffered to love. He suffered to give. He suffered to save you. And then he said, I need you to follow me. So that means we're going to suffer with him. And when you continue to read your Bible, you'll actually notice that it consistently tells us these things and that it tells us, especially Paul consistently repeats that we're going to have to suffer. 
When you look in the book of Isaiah, it talks about the suffering servant, which is Jesus, before he came. So I just want people to know, like, this walk is not easy, but you need people around you that will help you and stay in your word and stay close to God so that you don't fall off, okay? All right, we're going to go to the next one. The second mistake that new Christian believers make or tend to make is that they fall off after their fire for God wears off. What do I mean? What do I mean fire for God? Fire for God, when you start to walk this walk, you want fire for God. You going hard, you reading your Bible, you praying, you trying to be a part of prayer calls, you trying to go to Bible study every week, you trying to go to church every Sunday, right? You trying to do everything you can, you trying to stay in your Bible, you buying other different spiritual books, you may be going to conferences, like you doing a lot of these things, you excited about it, right? It's the exact same thing when you start something new. Like when you first go to school, you're excited. Oh my God, I got into this college. You're excited. You're extremely excited. When you get into a relationship, you're extremely excited. Oh, this is, oh my God, I couldn't wait for this. Boom, boom, boom. But you know what happens over time when you start school? It starts to get harder. You remember that feeling that you felt in the beginning? That excitement, that enjoyment it starts to wear off. And then what happens? You're like, man, I don't know why I did this. I don't know why this is so hard. I don't know. No, no. Right, you start to go. The same thing with relationships. It starts to get harder. That enjoyment, that infatuation starts to wear off. Right? That infatuation starts to wear off. And then what happens? People, it's harder for people to do things. People start not doing what they're supposed to do in relationships, in school. Right? You got to work hard at this thing to stay in this thing. Right? That's what happens in a relationship with God. Because just like I said, relationship, that's the same thing that happens in a relationship with God. You're excited in the beginning. You know, you're going hard. Oh my God, I love God. You're screaming at the top of the mountains. Then it get hard. It get really hard. I want y'all to know that. For the new Christians and for the other people, let us know. For the, for the other Christians, for the Christians that have been doing this for a while, been in the faith, been following God, let them know in the comments how it is. Let them know how you've been through this as well, how you was on fire, but then it wore off and then you had to work hard. You even made a, you even may have wanted to stop and question your faith, right? So I want y'all to know that this is a mistake that new Christian believers make. They fall off because they tend to think or they don't have something to keep them strong. They don't have people around them to keep them strong. They don't understand that they got to work hard. They don't understand that love is an action word. It's not just a feeling. Because I know you're going hard because God loves you. And you you believe, I love God. I love God. I would never. But then all of a sudden, everything getting thrown at you. All of a sudden, people treating you wrong. All of a sudden, nobody likes you. All of a sudden, people start to not respect you as much. All of a sudden, you start to get crucified like Jesus said. Right? Jesus said that they'll hate you because they hated me. They'll crucify you because they crucified me. So the thing is, is that you got to walk this same walk with Christ. And I don't think Jesus was excited when he was being crucified. I don't think it was easy when he was being crucified. Get what I'm saying? So we have to understand that the start of something is going to always be excitement. But then guess what's going to happen? You're going to get hit. Boom. And boom. And boom. Like a storm. And then what you going to do, right? Because to follow God isn't to follow God off of emotion. It's almost like God allowed the infatuation. But now once the infatuation wears off, once that excitement falls off or fades away, now you get to actually show if you really want to follow God. Because to follow God is to choose him over how we feel. It's to choose him over what's happening to us. Meaning I got to do this even when I don't want to do it. I make these videos sometimes when I don't want to do it. And I ain't going to lie, like I love doing this, but it is very hard and it takes a whole lot to do these videos a lot, especially the way that I, the way that I do them and how long they might be and how I got to edit them. And I might take three to four hours just to do a session of videos. That's a lot. Plus, I'm in a PhD program. Plus, I got a daughter. Plus, I got so many other things I got to do. So it's hard a lot of times. And guess what? I got to 
make myself or I got to ask God to help me to do the thing that I want to do for him, even when I don't want to do it. Just like I have to love people who don't love me back or don't show it back. That's what it means to follow God. I do it for you, even when you don't do it for me. I do it for you, even when you hurt me. I don't not, I, when following God, I can't not do that for you just because you hurt me. Because that would mean that I'm choosing me over God. So that's what happens a lot of times with new Christian believers. They make the mistake of falling off after that fire wears off. And I remember I felt that. I remember talking to people, just telling me how they felt and then saying that they don't feel like it no more. And I understand and that happens to everyone. But this is a mistake that a lot of believers make, right? And I got more to explain these mistakes and to explain this mistake, all right? So this is one that we got to keep on going, finding ways how to keep on going when we feel like we don't want to anymore, when we feel like it's extremely hard, when we feel like God is not there, when we feel like God is not talking to us, when we feel like Maybe we wronged God when we feel like maybe we sinned and now we feel far from God or he hates us or whatever it is, which he does not hate us. But sometimes we feel like that. And that's when we got to get in his word. That's when we got to learn who he is so that we can know who he is and know what he says. So that when we feel like that, we'll know the truth and that truth will pick us up. All right, let's go to the next one. The third mistake that new Christian believers make or tend to make a lot is get right into a relationship with a new Christian or with another Christian, right? We tend to get right into a relationship as soon as we have now been baptized or have now gotten into this relationship with God. I believe that's a mistake. I don't believe we should be doing that because a lot of times I've done it myself. I mean, I have been a new Christian when this happened, but this was when I started to go hard in my relationship with God. And I actually got into a relationship with a girl as soon as that happened. And it didn't work for a lot of reasons. But I also see new Christian believers doing this exact same thing. We tend to get into a relationship as soon as because we think we think someone who loves God is in their Bible is going to church, is going to Bible study. Oh my God, is praying on their knees. They're crying on the floor. They're praying for me. We tend to believe that a person that's doing those things is considered to be a godly person, right? Because this is what we do. This is what it's supposed to be. Oh, they love God. But see, that's what we mess up at. We don't actually know because again, we're new Christian believers at this time. We, but we think, and this is how the enemy gets us. We think we know what we're doing. We think we're further along than what we are. We think we're strong in our relationship with God, and we know. We think this person truly loves God. But guess what? A lot of times, when we get into this relationship with God, let me tell you the truth. When you're a new Christian believer, it's going to be hard to get with a Christian believer that 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 been doing this and walking this walk for a long time. It may be hard to get with somebody like that because that person can tell if we're new to this or not. And a lot of times, if you are a new believer or a baby and someone has been in this game for a while, for one, they got the discernment to see. Two, you could be unequally yoked because you're not fully there yet to understand things. So what happens is because most of the time we may not get with somebody like that, I'm saying may, because it could happen, right? What happens is we tend to get into a relationship with someone who's where we are, who is where we are. Now, if that person is where we are, you think they strong enough yet? You think they've been abstaining long enough yet? You think they know who God is enough yet? You think they know how to love yet? Fully, you still a baby. Babies take baby milk because they don't understand yet. They still got to grow, right? So... We tend to get in relationships with those type of people and also forgetting that we are new believers, meaning that we are not there yet. 
So we, the love that we so much want and that we searching for, and oh my God, I think I got it. We haven't even learned how to do it yet. We haven't even learned how to love like God loves yet. We only know how God loves us in this moment. So we tend to prematurely get into a relationship as soon as we become new Christian believers. And then that messes everything up because the love that we want so bad from God and I want to do this, that person may not be like that. That person may not actually read their Bible all the time. That person may just have crossed over and now they're in the faith, which means they still may be in the infatuation stage. Right? They may still have just that fire, but, but it ain't wore off yet. So they ain't, they ain't even that strong yet. They ain't been in the game as long yet. You get what I'm saying? So what happens is we get into the relationship so easy. And us too, we ain't in the game. We don't know exactly everything that we need to do. We don't know how to truly depend on God, rely on God, how to put God first. We do it too fast. But what actually needs to happen is we need to take our time. We need to gain our relationship with God first, which takes time. You know what I'm saying? Which takes time. And then allow God to lead us rather than so quickly wanting to be with somebody so fast. We haven't had true relationship and intimacy with God yet. And we move too fast. And guess what happens? The enemy uses that fast. So he knows that's what you want. So he coming after you fast with that. That's how he catches us. But if we took our time, if we focused on God rather than being so infatuated and, and wanting and desiring a relationship so quickly, we wouldn't make that mistake. But that's one of the mistakes most of us make. But I mean, I ain't going to say it's, it, it's a bad thing, but it's also a good thing because we learn and we grow. God opens our eyes from it. He gives us discernment and a lot of insight from that as well. So it's also a good thing that God can use. Get what I'm saying? But it's still a mistake that a lot of us make. All right. I'm going to go on to the next one. The fourth mistake that new Christian believers tend to make or make is that they do not join Christian communities. They don't join Christian communities. A lot of times we don't join Christian communities. When I first started to move hard with God, I, I don't think I was really looking for it like that. I don't know. I can't remember if I was really looking for it, but I feel like people was reaching out to me. It was like, oh, you want to come to this Bible study? Oh, you want to come to this Bible study? You want to do this? You want to do that? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. Well, I was like, ah, I'm abstaining from sex. I don't want to be around no girls because I might feel real weak. Like, it was a lot of reasons why I would say no, right? But sometimes some of us come in to this new faith or this, or, or we're new believers, new Christian believers, right? And then we just want people to make us their friend. We want people to reach out to us, right? Because, okay, yeah, people reached out to me for Bible studies and stuff like that. I ain't gonna lie. But not everybody gets that. Not everybody gets what I what, what God did for me in that time, I guess, right? Some people go to church. They don't meet new people. They might even bring some of their friends that's not even truly following God like that to church with them because they're trying to do this thing, but they don't really know how to do it. So now they come to church. They go to Bible study. They go to church every week, but they still struggling with their relationship with God in a lot of ways because they haven't joined any Christian communities. Like they haven't joined any specific Bible studies. Like you could join outside Bible studies, online Bible studies. You could get on online Christian communities. Um, they haven't joined small groups, ministries in the church. They haven't joined, they haven't gained friends at the church. They haven't went to other functions that the church have. They're not talking to nobody in the church, right? They're just going in the church and leaving the church immediately as soon as service in. You get what I'm saying? So then you don't gain no friends. You don't gain community. And that's a mistake because that, the enemy will use that and have you thinking all types of things about yourself like, Nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be around me. And Christians don't do this. Or they'll be they'll be humans, you know what I'm saying? And, and people are humans. Christians are humans as well. And they might, you know, they might even be talking to you and they might say something that you don't like. 
or act the way that you don't like. So now you're judging them like, well, the Christian's supposed to be like this, and now you don't want to be their friend. Now you don't want to be their friend. So now you you not gaining no friends, and you're also making a judgment and a thought based off of one person, and that causes you to not want to gain friends with nobody else. When truly one of the best ways to, to, to gain friends at the church, for one, is to join Christian communities, small groups, ministries, life groups, go to specific Bible studies, online communities, and all of that. And also to be a friend is to gain a friend. So instead of wanting people to just want to come up to you, you could go up to somebody. You could ask a question. You know what I'm saying? You could ask something about another ministry, something about a, a team, something that you got to do at the church. You could join an online community. That may be easier to do. Join an online Christian community where you can gain friends that way. But instead, what we do is that we don't join Christian communities and then we judge all the other Christians in the church saying all these things, but we not gaining no friends and we blaming it on everyone else as if I was self, right? To receive, you have to give. So if you want friendship, you have to be a friend. You have to show friendliness. You have to communicate. You have to smile. If you want Christian believers, if you read your Bible and you're a new believer and you know God consistently talks about love and friendship and being kind and all these things, then you have to learn to do those things. And that will also cause people to want, will pull to you. They'll cause pe that'll cause people to pull to you because they see that on you and they want friends too. They may also be feeling just like you. So that's something that we do, y'all. We don't join Christian communities. We get afraid and things start happening, man. We get weak. We feel far from God. Well, really, let's, let's try to gain Christian communities because a Christian community will keep you strong, will literally challenge you, keep you strong. You will have accountability partners. You will have friends you could call. You have people passing you Bible, Bible scriptures, videos, sermons, you know, somebody you could talk to who's talking about their walk like that will keep you stronger. All right. So that's one of the mistakes. That's number four. That's the, that's the fourth mistake on the list that most new believers make. They don't join Christian communities. You need a Christian community to walk this walk. This is why Jesus called them together, right? He called Andrew and Simon, Peter, at the same time, two brothers. Then he called James and John at the same time to follow him, two. And then he sent them out in two. And then he had all the 12 disciples together, right? They was all together. And then they had new apostles when they formed the apostles, right? Then they were all together. It was a family. They, were, they had a community. This is why when you look in the Old Testament, God has the city of Jerusalem. God had all the Israelites. It was a community, right? And you would say, well, he called one. He called one to help the community, to strengthen the community, to speak to the community through him. Everything was about community and family with God, relationship. So we need that, okay? All right, we're going to go to the fifth one, and then I'm going to give you a bonus, all right? The fifth mistake that new Christian believers make or tend to make is not knowing that they will lose friends and family on this walk. The fifth mistake that new Christian believers make is not knowing that they will lose friends and family on this walk with Christ. Yes, I said it. You will lose. Let me repeat this. This ain't no might. This is going to happen. Whether it's, whether it's one or more, you are going to lose friendships and maybe even family members. And when I say lose, I don't mean like pass away. What I mean is that people are going to exclude themselves from you. People are not going to want to talk to you that much no more. People are not going to want to ask you to be around them no more. The people that you was with, they're going to look at you differently. They're going to think of you differently. They're not going to want you around. That's plain and simple. It's, it's really true. And I think a lot of us don't realize that. But that's what happens because then we, we get into this walk with Christ and now our friends start asking us questions or judging us or however they acting, they're not calling us no more. And then a lot of times we're like, what, what is going on? Nobody calling me no more. You see them out. You looking on social media and you see them out or doing things and ain't nobody hit you up. Even if you knew you might not even go, nobody hit you up. It's happened to me too. 
I know what was going on and I, I see it happening to everybody. We make the mistake of not knowing that this would happen and then it, start to, it starts to kill us on the inside. It starts to bother us. It starts to eat us up. It starts to make us feel away. It starts to make us feel offended, defensive. It starts to make us feel like we are being abandoned by our friends and family that they don't like us no more. I'm not going to say that they don't really like you no more. It's just that you're different now. You think different now. You don't want to do the same things anymore. And also, who you are is starting to affect how they feel about themselves. So they got to exclude the person that don't have sex no more. They got to exclude the person who don't want to go to the club no more, don't want to drink no more, who don't want to who don't want to gossip no more, who don't want to be petty to people no more. They got to exclude that person that takes away the fun that they thought was fun in their life because they're not doing that no more because it makes them feel away. Let me remind you, I, I need the new Christian believers to remember and to understand this. When you walk in the room, Jesus walks in the room. And let's just say Jesus walked in the room where you was at. You want to think about everything that you do or did. If you're sinning, the first thing you want to think about is the bad things you did and how he going to judge you. That doesn't mean that he's going to judge you because Jesus said he didn't come to judge. But that's what you're going to think about, right? Because Jesus cleanses you. He's, he's the light, right? He's purity. He's God. He's holy. He's not, he's apart from this world. He's not like this world. So now you're going to look, you're going to look at yourself in a bad way for the things that you did. Is he going to accept you? But guess what? Because you follow him now, his spirit is in you. So when you walk in a room, he walks in the room. So they feel the same way towards you that they would feel if Jesus walked in that room by himself. That's why this is happening. You're going to lose people. You're going to lose people. Family members might feel away. Friends might feel away. People might start falling off. That's okay. That's okay. Don't get mad at them. Don't get offended. It's not your doing. This has to do with God, not you. It's God changing you. It's God pulling you into the wilderness. Like he sent the Israelites out of Egypt. They had to leave and remove their past life. And they had to go into the wilderness where they couldn't get to anything that they were stuck to that was a part of their past or their bondage, right? So that's what God is doing. He has to remove the people and he has to have an intimate relationship with you when you can't get to them. And now all you got to do is depend on him. This is the mistake we made. This is the mistake new believers make because they tend to feel real bad and don't know what's going on. And it kills them on the inside and it makes them struggle. And it even causes them to be tempted to go back and do the things with their friend so they could be accepted. You got to put God over people. What's going to happen is you're going to get stronger with God and then you'll be able to love on them. But at the moment, God is pulling things away. And that's what he does with our friends and family. All right. I promised you a bonus. I promised you a bonus. Here's the bonus. Here's one of the biggest things that new Christian believers do. You know what they do? They tend to believe everything they hear from other Christians. Listen to what I'm saying. They tend to believe everything they hear from other Christians or pastors or ministers or whoever else they believe that may have the calling or may know what they're talking about when it comes to God. And what I mean is they go to different churches because they don't know how to differentiate and how to decipher and how to see who really is truly following God. So they think this is godly or they think that is godly or they think this is what God wants. And they see Christians or pastors or other churches being away. And then they're fascinated because it's something new to their mind. Or they hear it on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. And they're fascinated because they don't know. And the reason why they may be confused and believing everything is because they haven't been that close to God yet. And they haven't been studying their Bible that much to understand yet. To see the truth. So you're pulled by mostly everything that you believe without fully knowing if it is true. Even if your family did it. Right? Because we may even believe a certain way and go towards things because of our family. But just because our family is that way doesn't mean that that's truly how God wants us to be. Even if they're Christian. This is why you got to stay close to God. Stay in your Bible because your family might not even be truly doing what God needs them to do. Even if it looks like it. Jesus said, I came to divide. 
Jesus said your own enemy will be in your family. He came to divide mother and daughter, father and son. He was talking about the spirit and the flesh. And he was also talking about from those who may believe or may think something. He wants you to see, he opens your eyes. That's what he came to divide, to help you see what you couldn't see or what is hard to see so that you could clearly see him. And then you'll see the difference between those closest to you. You get what I'm saying? So you got to stay in your Bible so that you'll know who to listen to, who's actually teaching the truth, right? Rather than just some stuff or a circus or just putting things the way that they want to make it. Like you start to become a student to God. That's the thing. We have to become students to God. And then as we become students to God, we'll feel even closer as his child. I mean, we know that we're his child, but what I'm trying to say is we'll feel closer and closer and we'll fully, truly know him, not believing everything that we hear. Notice I'm not saying to, to listen to every pastor. I'm saying to stay in your Bible so that you can realize what is what, who is who, and consistently talk to God throughout the day and he will reveal the truth to you. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see new Christians doing is that they believe everything they hear. You believe everything you see on YouTube just because that person is a pastor or they're a Christian. You believe everything they say. No, you need to be, believe everything God says in the Bible and God will help you to see if that person truly is close to him or not. Now, I don't want people to know. I don't want people to think we treat people wrong if we find out that what they're saying isn't fully true. We don't do that. We still love them because they may just not know at that moment. All right. The closer we get to God, the closer we, the more we start to be understanding and loving to those who may not even be that close. All right. So that's the five mistakes that new Christian believers make. I might do a part two on this later, y'all. But uh, yeah, hope the bonus helped y'all and everything. I hope this video blessed y'all, man. If y'all like it, please like the video for me, man, so this video can get seen so it can help other people. Please share this video with people that it might help. And please subscribe if you are not subscribed. All right? I thank y'all. I love y'all. I'm going to get it, y'all, when I get it, y'all.